Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Deep Understanding of Research Papers. Today in this tutorial I am going to explain a new paper called Pre-training on High Resource Speech Recognition Improves Low Resource Speech to Text Translation. This paper is by Samir Bansal, Herman Camper, Karen, Levish Karen Levishko, Adam Lopez and Sharon Goldwater. This paper is by uh, collaboration between three different universities, uh, TTIC and uh, one uh, university from uh, South uh, Africa and uh, University of Edinburgh. So uh, in this tutorial, I am going to explain the overview of this paper first. Then we will see the model architecture uh, published, uh, ex ex explained in this paper. And we will see the experiments and uh, at the end we will see some results. So coming to the introduction or overview of the paper. So this paper is mainly designed uh, to do something called speech translation. The speech translation is basically uh, something like uh, combi combination of speech recognition and machine translation. For example, let's say uh, you want to do uh, speech translation from English to Spanish or uh, uh, English to Spanish. For example, uh, if somebody is speaking in uh, Spanish, you want to uh, predict the English correspondence uh, sent corresponding sentence, right? That is speech translation. So basically, it's about uh, translating the entire sentence or entire spoken utterance into another language, uh, which which we are interested. And this is sort of you can think of it as decomposition of uh, the. Uh, de this you can think of it as a combination of speech recognition and machine translation. Let's say you want to achieve uh, in, uh, English to Spanish. Uh, translation what you will do usually is you will just you will first recognize the uh, Spanish uh, sp Spanish sentence using uh, Spanish speech recognition then you will do machine translation which converts the Spanish text into English text but speech translation in this text is in this context is about directly going from it's a single model which directly uh, takes you from the audio in one language to the text in other language and that is the speech to text translation and in this paper, what they show is, they say, if you pre-train if you pre-train the model, the speech to translation model using a high resource automatic speech recognition model, then you, uh, then you uh, uh, use the weights of this uh, high resource automatic speech recognition model, and then you then you fine tune the parameters of this model for uh, ST task, which is speech translation task. You get huge in, huge improvements in uh, performance. So that is, uh, that is what they are trying to show here. So basically, they, if you pre-train on uh, 300 hours of uh, English uh, speech recognition uh, task, then you can uh, increase the performance of Spanish to English speech translation from blue point 10.8 to 20.2, which is huge uh, improvement. And uh, be because uh, the translation data, what you get is very low. I mean, let's say uh, you are, uh, you are lang the language uh, which you are interested, uh, uh, is a let's say a local language in India which does not have a lot of uh, English, a uh, lot of uh, audio data. Then uh, you will have to uh, find some way to do the uh, do the translation uh, a very high, I mean, very high, high accurate, high, high, uh, the, with uh, high accuracy. But uh, uh, usually, if you go with normal normal way, you will need a lot of data to get the performance. Uh, yeah, I, I have very good performance. But uh, this paper shows like if you do it with do the pre-training with uh, available speech recognition data, let's say English, and then you try to fine-tune this uh, model using this low resource uh, translation data, then you will get a very good performance. And uh, also they show that uh, your speech, uh, your uh, pre-training task may not uh, may not have the uh, may not have source or uh, target speech recognition. It can be completely different language by itself. For example, let's say you are doing uh, Spanish to English uh, translation, and uh, these guys have shown that if you use uh, French speech recognition and then you pre-train the model and then uh, pre-train the model using French speech recognition and then you fine-tune it with Spanish to English translation task, it, you will still get uh, performance improvement. This is very uh, like. Uh, very good thing. I mean, uh, and it's a bit hard to believe because 
bit hard to believe in the sense uh, it does not make sense for example if i pre train with some other language and try to fine tune it to some other languages it sounds a bit weird but what actually happens is the model tries to capture the channel variability and speaker variability and acoustic variability and uh, then you can fine tune it is basically sort of learned the lower level features then you can uh, sort of fine tune the uh, model with the uh, the whatever translation task you are uh, interested right so that is the whole idea of, of uh, this paper and uh, this show that uh, some uh, if you uh, there is a there's one more experiment they have done where uh, they have somehow combined the english speech recognition and uh, sorry uh, they have combined if you if you pre-train the model with combination of english asr and french asr you will get a uh, improvement in performance uh, for this uh, boshi french uh, boshi to french uh, speech translation task uh, where uh, you have very low amount of uh, audio data or very low amount of translation data for this boshi language because uh, it's a uh, it's not a well known well very well known language uh, there are very few people who talks uh, this language and they show that if you if you uh, do this uh, uh, translation for this uh, mo uh, bo uh, uh, boshi to uh, french uh, you will get uh, uh, blue score uh, going from 3.5 to 7.1 uh, which is a very good uh, point right then uh, we will see now uh, we will see the model architecture so basically uh, in this model arch architecture what we uh, uh, we will basically understand what is the uh, architecture and what is the architecture we are trying to use and the architecture goes like this so it's a sort of encoder decoder model where you have the encoder which basically processes the audio data and you have a decoder which basically generates your generates the uh, text which is basically uh, it could be another language for example your input could be a spanish speech as you can see here i'll just uh, write it so your input could be uh, spanish data and your output is an english uh, text so this is the translation task uh, for example so here if you look at uh, this picture here you have a uh, you have an input which is spanish speech which could be a speech waveform right spanish audio and what what happens this spanish data uh, goes through feature extraction process where you extract the feature which is uh, mfcc feature in this case then you feed it to uh, a neural network a neural network which composes of composed of uh, cnn plus lstm and then uh, you apply uh, some sort of attention a very well known thing so you sort of a, this is an encoder decoder model encoder decoder model with attention this you can think of as encoder and this is the decoder so this encoder after attention goes to uh, the decoder where in the decoder where you predict the uh, word pieces and the output of uh, every step goes back to the next step and uh, for example let's say uh, c goes goes back to uh, the second time step and predicts a uh, layer and uh, this layer goes here and, and predicts i uh, l y so on so that way you are going to do the decoding so this is the whole idea so basically our idea i mean the idea is to give uh, given input which is a span, uh, which is one language and which is audio in one language and try to predict the text corresponding text of that language the translated text of that uh, translated text in the decoder right which is in other language this is encoder decoder model or people also call it a seek to seek model sequence to sequence model and a very well known uh, model being used uh, in a lot of places and this is the whole idea of this paper so uh, so whenever i mention the model architecture the the we, we have to assume that uh, this is the model we are trying to uh, use right so so th this is this is about it next coming to the model architecture so what we have is we have encoder decoder model as i said so this is encoder decoder model with attention uh, uh, many people will be knowing about it and so what they have done is they have done the pre training of this encoder decoder model using english asr so for english asr for example when i say uh, when we have encoder decoder model let's say this is your encoder and this is your decoder uh, for speech for let's say you have attention also in between so what happens is if you're doing speech recognition you feed the speech as input and predict the corresponding transcript transcript at the output right so this could be for that particular language itself for example english right 
for English itself, you feed the English audio and try to get the corresponding transcript of it. This is the automatic speech recognition and that's what they are saying. We use the pre-trained uh, ASR model, uh, English ASR model to initialize the training for Spanish to English. As you can see here, the previous slide. So this is the Spanish to English model, but they are pre-training and initializing those encoder decoder with the uh, English ASR uh, pre-training. Right? And the same way they do it with uh, uh, French also, where uh, they pre-train the model with French ASR and then they use it for, uh, use it as a based initialization for Boshi to French uh, translation uh, model, right? And uh, uh, so basically the decoder, basically what what happens is if you are, let's say, you, are, uh, you have an encoder-decoder model, you have an encoder and you have a decoder, encoder takes English audio and tries to predict, let's say encoder takes Spanish audio, right? And tries to predict English transcript. So the idea, once you do the pre-training, uh, before before this, we have to do the pre-training where you feed the English audio and get English transcript. So basically, the vocabulary at the decoder is similar both during pre-training and during fine-tuning for a particular uh, translation task, right? So that is the idea. Then also, uh, they have shown that if you if you uh, let's say uh, let's say you have an encoder decoder model and you don't have English data at all. Let's say you have only French data, but your goal is to do Spanish to English uh, translation, but you don't have any English or Spanish data at all. So what you could do is, you can take another language which is available with you, let's say French. You can first train a speech recognition, which is French to French, French audio to French transcript, right? Using this model, now you can't use the decoder because the, at the decoder the number of word pieces or the no vocabulary is different because uh, for SC task you want the vocabulary to be for English vocabulary not French vocabulary. So what you could do is during that phase you can't use the decoder but you can only use the weights of the encoder. So this is what is uh, shown in this paper also. right? And coming to the experiments data set, they have switchboard corpus, which is 300 hours of audio, uh, split into 250k utterances, then development is 5 hours, which is split into 4k center utterances. And for French, they are using global phone uh, data set collected by Tanya Schultz uh, in, uh, by in 2002 uh, something. And uh, uh, this data is around 20 hours of high quality uh, red speech data for uh, for uh, French and split into 9k utterances and there is 2 hours of uh, test data, right? And uh, again in the database itself uh, you have, uh, 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 so for the for the translation task you will need, uh, there is something called Fisher Spanish Speech Corpus which consists of 160 hours of uh, telephone speech in uh, variety of Spanish dialects. So it basically has 140 utterance, 140,000 utterance. So before, uh, we could directly use this 160 hours of data for speech translation, but just to show the effectiveness, they have used uh, pieces of uh, data where they uh, use 50 hours, then 20 hours, then 10 hours, 5 hours, and 2.5 hours, and they show the results. And same way uh, for Boshi to French uh, translation, they have only 4 hours of translated data, and uh, and uh, there is no test data it seems, so they, they have taken some 200 utterances from the training itself and uh, divided it into development and that is being used as a test data, right. And uh, again coming to the experimentation, the sort of features they are using is a 13 dimensional MFCC feature, uh, a lot of people know about MFCC, if you are working in audio is a very uh, important one. Uh, 13 dimension MFCC is being used uh, like just like in this, it was extracted from Kaldi and uh, means uh, speaker uh, level n mean and non variance normalization is done as you can see here. And for the vocabulary, they use the byte pair uh, encoding to cut the sentence into subwords and uh, those subwords are being used as the output characters instead of simply using ABCD, they are using word pieces. And uh, this MFCC goes as input to the uh, two uh, two layer CNN uh, with 128 and 512 filters for dimension filter. And uh, attention is used at the decoder. And uh, during prediction, they uh, predict uh, the token is, uh, once you predict the token, uh, that token's embedding goes as input to the next step's uh, prediction. So that is the whole idea as you saw in the diagram. And uh, again, uh, during training, uh, they, they don't, uh, during training, they don't use the ground truth itself to give give the, the ground truth, the data only, only, I mean, usually people use only ground truth data during training, but uh, the, here they are using 20% of predicted tokens along with 80% of the ground truth tokens during training, right? 
I mean, it's basically during uh, decoding step, uh, you have to feed the predicted uh, output as input to the next model, but uh, people simply have the ground rules, so they'll directly feed that as input. I mean, it's a small trick. And the regularization is done with uh, dropout, and then uh, Gaussian noise is added for this MSC feature just to get the robustness. Coming to the results, uh, I have only one slide. Uh, there are many results here, but first let me explain this uh, first diagram where uh, you have the WERs for uh, WERs basically word error rate. Uh, word error rate is measured uh, mostly in uh, speech recognition, right? So, speech recognition. So, as you, you can ask, like, why are you measuring speech recognition accuracy here? Because we are doing pre training with speech recognition or ASR, right? So, so WER for English uh, switchboard 100 hours of data, the test data basically uh, trained with 100 R is basically 35.4, which is high. And if you train it with 300 hours and test it with the development, same switchboard corpus, you get 27.3. These are very high compared to the state of the art results for switchboard, which is around 16%. Uh, but why this is happening is because they are stopping the uh, model after 30 epochs. They are not training it completely. That's the reason why it is uh, higher compared to the Kaldi's uh, uh, original uh, results. And for French, they have 29.6% uh, WR. So once you train this, then you can start doing the expo experiments of uh, fine tuning uh, given this. So coming to the second, uh, again, second image here, as you can see, the x-axis is the amount of hours of data you have for speech translation task. Let's say this is for Spanish to English. And here, the y-axis is the blue score. So higher the blue, better the system. So uh, if you use, uh, let's say, 2.5 hours of data, the blue is very high. If the blue base is basically without doing pre-training, just the normal uh, encoder decoder model with random initialization. But if you do uh, ASR initialization, automatic speech recognition pre-training initialization with, with uh, fine tuning, then you get this line, which is like much better than uh, this line because you are getting a lot of improvement over the baseline, right? And at 50 hours, you get uh, this is like at around 20 and this is like at around 28 and uh, 27. And uh, that is a huge gap for the blue score. Um, and uh, this is the sort of imp improvement they are getting. And this diagram shows like what are the important uh, components in the after pre-training, which are going to be helpful for fine tuning. For example, you have uh, encoder, you have decoder, and within encoder, you have CNNs and LSTM. And the thing is, uh, if you use only the encoder, uh, initialization uh, using pre-training and if you decode the decoder if you randomly initialize it, what will happen and those are the things they are asking the question is uh, like what is the most important pre-training model pre-trained uh, part of the asr is is contributing for improvement in result so as you can see all of them are mostly uh, contributing like you see this green line asr all is basically all parts you need for uh, getting the highest accuracy but uh, they show that the next most important part of the uh, model is the encoder. So as you can see the encoder here. And decoder is not uh, much important it seems. So as you can see the lines are like almost similar, almost similar like this, these two, almost similar compared to the baseline. That's, uh, that's the experiments on uh, which part of the uh, ASR model pre-training weights are important. Then coming to the last experiment where uh, they have they have used the uh, pre-training from language which is not at all, uh, not even the source or the target language. For example, if I am speaking about Spanish to English translation, I am going to do the initialization using French ASR. Right? If you do that, if you do that, you get around 12.5% blue. Right? And the baseline was 10.8%. 10.8. And if you with this, this is a 20 hours of data and if you do the pre-training with English only 20 hours of audio just for the fair comparison between the French and English you get 13.2 which is little bit higher than this one but still they are same so basically what it says is if you have uh, let's say 100 hours of uh, French data I mean just assumption 100 hours of French data and if you pre-train the model with 100 hours of French data and then fine tune it with Spanish to English translation, you will your results will be almost similar to the model which you are going to build when, where you have the pre-trained weights using English 100 hours of data and Spanish to English translation task, which is a very nice thing. Sometimes you might not have uh, data which is not even both the source and uh, uh, target. So that time you can take any, any available uh, data set uh, which you like and then you can fine tune the model. Right? So that is the idea. 
and that's all for this video uh, thank you so much for watching this tutorial if you are not subscribed to my channel please subscribe and if you like this video please like like the video and uh, thank you